Welcome back everybody to another indie MMO devlog. Today we're gonna try to put the M in MMO and scale up the networking just a little bit. So previously what I was doing is I was sending over uh, the entire world to each player. So obviously that's not very good because it doesn't scale very well because as you grow the world, now you have to send over more data every single network tick. So what I wanted to do this week was optimize that a little bit. So yeah, let's hop right into it and I will show you what I did. So I made a change to uh, reduce the amount of bandwidth that was wasting what i did previously was i would literally just package up the entire world and send it over every single network tick to update the player what i'm going to do now instead is i'm actually going to track the vision based on the player position and where they are in the spatial hash like so basically go through the vision bounds and find out everything that collides with that vision bounds and only those entities will get sent to the player so every player has the entities that they see and then uh, only those entities will get sent to them and then uh, just as a little demo you can kind of see how much it reduces the actual amount of entities that need to get sent out and the dungeons are pretty small right now so the savings aren't that crazy but as you can see there's only two entities right now in the game just the player and then the dungeon entrance so if we run up and enter the dungeon then uh, you can see there's 74 entities now in this dungeon this is what would have been sent normally and now i'm only send sending 16 so it's a pretty big reduction you know run around kill stuff you can see the entity count drops in the dungeon and also drops for the player i wanted to see how many bytes i was actually saving let's go into the dungeon now and it should be a little bit better so this is just in like the first room you can see it, we would have sent uh, 9,000 bytes, but now we're only sending 1,200. That's a pretty big reduction for such a small little change. And then uh, let's just see how it changes as we go like into an actual room. It's hard because I'm going to die, but all right. Yeah, like 9.7K to 1,400. That'll save us some bandwidth for sure, especially in really big dungeons and really big worlds and ones with a lot of players that aren't really uh, immediately visible. So yeah. All right, so I wanted to do a little bit of uh, bandwidth optimization on my component serialization as well. You can kind of see the different components that I send over and then what the sizes get serialized to. So uh, I think one I saw was a player input buffer, which is actually taking a lot of space. Well, circle clatter is 28 bytes, which is kind of a lot. Walk to is 36 bytes. So I think these are ones that I can optimize. Then things like health, I probably can't optimize that very much because it's only three bytes. Oh yeah, there's player input buffer. That's 202 bytes, so that's a lot. So uh, we're just going to find the biggest ones and then we're going to optimize those and then we'll see how low we can get our serialized size down to. All right, we got the first bit packed component update in. If you remember originally, what did it take? 228 bytes for the player input buffer. I thought about trying to remove it, but uh, I realized it's actually pretty essential for replaying like remote players. And it's also something that's attached to every single player. So the more players you have, the more of this component is going to get sent out to everybody. Previously it was at 228 bytes. Now it's at uh, 90 bytes, which is a big reduction for something that's sent so frequently. And basically what I did is I just wrote a custom binary marshaller and a custom binary un marshaller so i was able to reduce the size by basically just packing in all of these booleans into one uint 16 and then uh, i reduced the float 64 target position to float 32 it doesn't really need that level of accuracy uh, so float 32 is fine and this isn't anything that's used for like a deterministic input in my game either so uh, that works out as well so yeah overall wasn't that hard but uh, a little bit of hard coding in terms of positions but if i ever add one i have to change it anyways so but maybe i could abstract these out to like constants but it's not that big of a deal so yeah that's that change and uh, yeah, we'll keep reducing it, see how far we can get. I was finally able to uh, improve the collider serialization. I basically stripped out all of the runtime info. I was tracking uh, at runtime the position of the center of the collider. So I ended up separating that out into the physics position, which is kind of like the high resolution position of the object. That was able to reduce a lot of the extra data that needed to be serialized in the collider got removed. So that was pretty helpful. So I removed it from, I think it was 28 to four. So now it's been, it just basically has the radius, which I uh, pushed into a UN8. So I figured the maximum collider is going to be less than 256 and the resolution of one is probably good enough i think that will work oh yeah and then the only other two pieces of data that are in this collider are the layer that the collider is on and the layer that that collider hits so that's only three pieces of data so i was able to strip out a lot of the extraneous stuff that didn't really matter i think it's a lot cleaner inside the code too so the next thing I optimized was uh, the walk to component. And this is basically just used to describe the position that a NPC will take. So for example, you have an NPC walking from like point A to point B. So there's two points that get sent over the network and positions in the game right now are represented by float 64s. So what I did was I basically just made a change to reduce the serialized position to be a float 32. So effectively that would cut in half the size of every position that I sent over. And because I was sending over two, that converted us from four 
four float 64s to four float 32s. So it used to be 32 bytes and now it would be 16 bytes. So we went from 37 to 21 bytes. So that was a big reduction. And this is notably used on every single NPC in the game. So reducing components that are sent over very frequently is, is a huge improvement. So this was an important one to improve. Also, because I used the walk to component to calculate the position of the NPC, I was able to remove the physics position from being sent over. So now I kind of alternate. I'll only send the physics position if I'm not already sending a walk to position because I only need one of these to show the client where the entity is. So for things like other players and other non-deterministic entities, I'll send over the physics position. Otherwise, I'll send over the whole walk to component because it's probably an NPC or some monster or something like that. The next thing I removed was a attack cooldown. Um, this was a component that I previously was sending over, but I didn't really need to send over the network, mostly because I'm able to simulate it on both the client and the server separately. So I was able to remove that component completely. So that was an 11 byte saving. This is something that's also sent over for every single entity that can attack. The next one I did was the bot attack action. This is just an action that gets sent over when the bot wants to attack. I did the same exact thing I did for the walk to position where I just shorten the amount of data that gets sent over for the attack action. So instead of sending over two float 64s, I'll send over two float 32s. So we'll go from 18 bytes to 10 bytes for this one. So overall, with all of those uh, packet compression techniques implemented, uh, we reduced our bandwidth usage for 80 entities from 11,000 bytes to about 5.6 thousand bytes. So it's about a 50% reduction, which is pretty impressive, I think, for just a few changes. All right, that's all I have for this week. As always, an absolutely massive thank you to all the supporters on YouTube, GitHub, and Patreon. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.